Hi guys, Ross here, and it has been a while. Happy New Year. Um, I hope you all had a great Christmas and you had time to rest. Um, and I thought, you know, I'll start off the New Year on a high and I will try to get back into creating some content for you guys. So today I'm going to be coming back with a video showing you how to create this bottle render. I'm going to be going through the modeling, the lighting, the texturing, and then I'm going to create a second video which is going to be going through the post production. So I hope you enjoy the video, guys, and let's get straight into it. Okay, all right, yeah, let's go for this. All right, I'm going to take that, um, I'm going to kind of use that image as a backplate for just a reference. Okay, cool. All right, let's dive into this then. All right, uh, okay, so. I'm going to be using Cinema 4D. I'm going to come into my front view, uh, Shift V, and I'm just going to drag this image here. Um, now, a beer bottle. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think how big a beer bottle is. Maybe like, hmm, maybe like 20 centimeters. All right, so if I take this cube and I make it 20 centimeters. In height, that's how big our image should be. So I'll scale this down. Uh, and just sit this on the bottom. Um, and this is actually my second attempt at recording this video. Uh, um, I kind of, when I recorded it the first time, I kind of dived in with not really a clear plan on where I was heading with it. Um, and it ended, the recording ended up being like three hours long and the result of it was not worth three hours of someone sitting through that video. So um, what I'm going to do with this one is I've got a bit of a clear idea of where I'm, where I'm taking it. So I can try to get through this a bit quicker and that means you haven't, you guys haven't got to sit through an unnecessary long video. Um, So what I've done here is I've just set up a reference image, I've scaled it down to an actual life-size scale or estimate of what I think the size of a beer bottle is. Um, and I've just faded the background out and what we're going to use this now is to kind of draw the spline of our beer bottle. Uh, so I've just come out, grabbed the pen, uh, we're going to start, you know what, I'm going to turn snapping on and turn work plane on. Uh, grid point, grid line. <laughs> so I can start dead on zero. Uh, we can start working into this. And let's just make sure that I get like straight edges. Um, just for now, and then I can go back and... Actually, I'm going to turn that off already. And I'm just going to get through this. And um, let me uh, know in the comments if this is the kind of content you want to be seeing. Uh, I think my like I'm kind of like reflecting on what I've got on my channel, and it's really a a miss or like a mix match of things, really. Um, and that's down to me, kind of like I've changed I've changed like what I've done a lot over the last year. Um, obviously, when I created this channel, I was like heavily into lettering. Um, and I feel like I've I've actually strayed away from that quite a lot now. I don't really do much lettering at all really these days. Um, I'm more into motion, I'm more into 3D. So that's probably really where you're going to see content going in the future. And, you know, I understand that maybe some of you guys didn't subscribe for that, and that's cool. Um, but for anyone new joining the channel or that's interested, uh, I'd really appreciate feedback in the comments below about you know what tutorials you think would be helpful um, and then I can kind of go through those and you know create content that you guys want to see uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just mapping out the rough shape of this uh, that actually needs to be up a little bit uh, and also I'm kind of like I'm not talking through every single thing I'm doing um, just because I don't want this to like, I want it to be tutorial, like I want it to be helpful to you guys, uh, 
but I also feel like I don't need to explain every single step. Um, and obviously, like if you guys watch this and you're like, "Oh no, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to, like, I want you to talk through everything," then obviously I can do that. Um, but I think just for the sake of like keeping this video fairly short, um, I'm just kind of like going through the process and explaining certain things along the way, as opposed to breaking down how to use all the tools and like what everything does. Um, so yeah, um, I need to go more like this. It's more of like a sharper, like that. Okay, cool. And obviously we're using a lathe, so you want to make sure that both of our point, oh, this one doesn't matter, but you want to make sure this point at the bottom's on zero, so just come to your corners and make sure you're zero there. Uh, just so that it connects properly. Um, okay, that looks pretty decent to me. Uh, I'm actually just gonna nudge this in a bit because obviously, like glass models aren't like real life glass bottles aren't perfect. They're not going to have a perfectly straight edge, so just tiny details of like shifting that in a tiny bit to give it a bit of an angle. Like these little details will help when it comes to actually um, like getting refractions and reflections. So that looks cool. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm trying to think. Uh, all right, I'm going to select all the points with so Command A and then create outline. I don't know really how thick a glass bottle is. I was having a look at this a minute ago. So if I hit that, cool. We've got a 0.5 thickness. Let's change that to 0 0.35. Um, and then let's start to tweak some of this stuff. So you want to kind of add some like variation to the th to the glass. This is just going to help it, like, again, like I said, nothing's perfect, so I need to tweak some of these things. And when you create the outline, you'll get weird artifacts like that. Uh, let's chamfer this off. Oh, actually, no, because we're putting in a subdivision, so that's fine. Okay, cool. Alright, so put that in a lathe and then put that in a subdivision. And I'm a bit worried about how the normals are going to look on this. Okay. Hmm, if I was to delete that, yeah, okay. Okay, I think that works. All right, so let's back it up a bit. Uh, all right. And we actually do want to just round that edge off. So I'm going to select both of these points and shunt for those. And then probably actually rotate them just so it's more upright like that. And then both of these equal direction. Let's tweak these. Uh, okay, I think that looks all right. Let's look at this. Cool, right, I'm going to keep the back up of this spline uh, and I'll call this uh, outlined spline. I just like to keep backups probably just because I'm like, um, I don't know, I just like to be able to like go back if I mess something up. I, I haven't got a complete start from scratch. Um, 
Right, okay, let's put this into a lathe. And let's just see how the light's reflecting with this. So that's quite a harsh like curve there, so we can go in and update this a bit. And we can just kind of like chamfer that off a tiny bit. Which is basically like a bevel. And then let's just move those down a bit. So you get that, which is should be a bit nicer. Cool. Alright, let's just soften that a bit. Yeah, what we need to do is that looks better actually. But we can change this to natural. It should just help a bit. Uh, natural. Cool. And then what's the bottom of this look like? That looks okay. Cool. Uh, right, I'm going to replace the old outline spline. Delete that. Okay, all right, so let's make this editable. Let's look at what we're dealing with here. See how the shading's looking. Cool. Right, now let's create a cap. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I When I recorded the first one, I actually went horribly wrong with it. So, since then, I have educated myself on how to create a cap, and I'm going to run through that now. Um, <coughs> I feel like it'll be helpful. Um, it will kind of just, you know, help up the modeling skills for you guys. And, you know, once you've done it once, you can kind of just save that then and reuse it for other projects. Um, so I'm going to start with a cylinder. Uh, and I'm going to scale this down to, I don't know, how big's a cap? Probably overhangs a little bit like that. Um, and let's change this to an even number. I think when I watched the video, he did a 66. Uh, again, I probably don't need a backup, but I'm going to save one anyway. Alright, and let's make this editable. Um, I feel like I've... Okay, I think that's cool. Right, so we're going to select every two. I'm just going to go around and do this. And I'm not the best at modeling, I'm not going to lie. So um, I'm trying to remember how to do this the best way possible. Go through. Perfect. Okay, cool. Right. Um, and let's so extrude that a tiny bit. Uh, extrude inner. And then we're going to press T, scale those down a bit. And then move those to the bottom. Like that. I uh, just realized I forgot to do a step, so we're going to press U, L, and delete that whole bottom bit, we don't need that anymore. Um, and then we're going to get the, oh, how did he do this now? Fong selection, Fong break selection, select these. And I just press Shift C there, and it brings up this command box. Um, super helpful for if you know the name of something but you can't remember where it is in the menu. Uh, I use it loads. It's super super helpful. So I'm going to go through, delete all these. Okay, don't need those anymore. Uh, Alright, let's drop this into a subdivision. Okay, 
cool. Uh, we got something. Let's go into our front view because that cap looks way too big. So I'm going to get these, these points and I'm just going to drop all this down like that. Um, okay, cool. When you create an object like this and you make it editable, uh, I'm going to undo a few steps so I can run through this. Sometimes the top will like disconnect. Um, where you can fix this is if you just get your points or your lines. I, th I usually do points. I think points is the way forward. Uh, and you can see we've got floating points at the bottom here where we've deleted um, those bottom parts. And it kind of like thinks those points still exist. So you can just right click. Oh, So Command A, select all your points, right click and optimize. And in the settings I've just got the tolerance set to 0 0.01. Uh, and then press optimize and as you can see that's just got rid of those dots but it also connects the top point usually so now that's attached with the object um, cool so this should resolve the issue we had and what we're going to do is just extrude this a tiny bit upwards and actually just scale that inwards and hopefully hopefully yeah, okay, that does not look right, does it? I think it might be we need some loop cuts just to kind of add some subdivision to this. Okay, that looks like it's helped. Still getting something weird going on around here. You can see this looking a bit artifacty. Um and I actually don't like how high up those are going, so uh, let's go into our front view and let's grab that. Let's select all those. Uh, actually, no, we just want to select those there. Bring that, bring that down. Let's drag those up a tiny bit, just to round that off. Okay, I mean, this looks pretty good. We're just getting some, oh, I should probably save. Uh, 3D, what's the date today? It's one o'clock in the morning, 2001, 20. I call this beer bar. Trying to be more organized on my folders and files this year. Um, Okay, up in up in the subdivision seems to have sorted that out. Okay, cool. We're going to leave it at that for now. I don't want to spend too much time on on that. Um, and we'll just drop this in there. Uh, I could probably scale it down a tiny bit. So let's do that. We probably could have also slanted the edges. Uh, we might be able to do a quick fix on that. Let's see if that's going to be easy enough to solve or not. Um, UL for loop selection, grab those. And let's just kind of see. If we scale these up, yeah, there we go. Now let's scale the whole thing down. Subdivide that. Oh, is that gone inside? Yeah. Okay, cool, that works. Right. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, let's look at our reference. How does... Oh, that's not really a good photo. Let's go back, see if we can get one. Just have a bottle cap, just so I can kind of see. Only one that's well lit. This red one's probably a good example. Uh, 
Okay. So, right, so what we can do is actually extend that top. So, we'll move the cap further down. So it goes down to about there. Scale the whole thing up. And then let's take the top. Um, and I'm going to, let's see, how do I want to do this? Yeah, okay, let's. Turn that on. And let's get there. So to do the loop selection, I'm pressing U and then L, um, just in case I didn't explain that before. Right, maybe that looks a bit better now. Cool. I'm just going to loop cut that quick. Uh, just so we get more of a kind of like a, a that kind of shape. There we go. Sweet. That looks quite good. Cool. Um, and finally, I'm just going to add some thickness. So what we can do is, but if we just get all these, extrude, and then, oh, that's not really what I want, is it? Let's make it literally 0 0.01. Cool. Drag that in there. Sweet, just so we got a tiny, tiny bit of thickness. This should kind of help down the line. Right, uh, turn that back on. I'm going to put this in a subdivision as well. Sweet, cool. All right, let's save this. And what do we need to do now? The liquid. Cool, right, so I'm just going to name these. So we got the bottle, and then we got the cap. Now we need to do the liquid. So we should be able to just take our outline spline, and we're going to delete the outside points, uh, untick close. And this is going to be our liquid, if I didn't say that already. Uh, so probably liquid just going to come up to about here. If you hold command where you got the pen tool, you can create another point. So let's do it about halfway up there. And then delete that top part. And then we want this now to join back up to the center. So if I click the point, get the pen tool, and just click and then change this to zero. And then we just got to play with the handles. So uh, if you hold shift, you can break a point. And uh, one thing you need to know about liquids is that. You have surface tension, which means you get like this little curve at the end, um, and that's going to help you get that kind of thick liquid line that you see at the top of liquids. <laughs> um, if I give you an idea of what I'm talking about, it might actually be in our reference image. Nope. Uh, so like this Corona one, you get that black black line at the top, and that's because of the surface tension. So you can just recreate that by adding this little curve. Um, okay, now what we need to do is for liquids to react uh, properly and like give the right reflections and refractions, they need to intersect the 
the the for the inner wall of your glass. So if I grab these, there's probably a way to do this, but I just don't know. And it's literally only got a sec intersect a tiny bit. So we grab all those and shift them to the right a tiny bit. I'm just going to turn off the subdivisions so I can see the original lines. So you can see they're on top of the lines of the bottle at the moment. So I'm just going to shift them in a tiny bit there. Move down to the bottom. Make sure the liquid is below those. Cool. And then put this into a lathe. Boom. Um, and what did we have it set? We had it set to natural, right? I think, if I'm correct. Let's just have a look at that. I think that liquid. <clears throat> okay, cool. And uh, let's make this. So I'm going to put that in there because I like a backup. So that's going to be liquid. Outline spline. I'll call that wall spline actually. Uh, and then we can make this editable. And then drop this into a subdivision. Cool. So this is now our liquid. And let's just make sure they all line up. So, so we got our bottle with the thickness, liquids inside it a tiny bit. Uh, if we turn them on, uh, I feel like we should have made an extra point there. I might be able to add that in. Making sure. Okay, cool. Right, that should be right. So, turn that back on, and then make that free as well. That should help. We need to sort that liquid out. So, I'm hoping. <laughs> Uh, so like there, yeah, and now we've got a sharper edge, cool, right, I'm going to save this, put the bottle back in, okay, so let's get our setup going, so like I said, I'm going to be using Corona, so I'm going to get a Corona camera, obviously you can follow along using whatever render engine you're using. Um, it's not really changing the principles of like our modeling. It's just like how the lighting is going to work in your in your case. So I'm going to zoom this out, center it. Uh, I'm actually going to change it to a 80 millimeter lens. This is just going to kind of give you less of a rounded off top and bottom. Um, center this and then also I usually do like minus one and then bump that up just so it gives you a more front on view. Uh, that looks roughly about center. Cool. Keep a, Put a keyframe there and then we're cushy to and I'm just going to drag all these into a bottle group. Cool. Right, so we're going to get a plane I'm going to come out of the camera a second and I'm going to scale this down and just up the height. And we're going to have a curved backdrop. I'm going to turn the width segments down and, and then I'm going to put this into a bend deformer, scale that down and then turn the strength up and just rotate this. So, turn it like that. Turn it like that. Move 
move that back a bit. And then, so that's going to be a 90, a strength of 90. And then now we need to turn the height segments up. So that's a smoother curve. And that looks somewhere about right. Cool, right. So let's look at our reference image and see how they've lit this. So, oh, actually, before we go into lighting, uh, let's do the condensation. I feel like that's quite a popular thing that people would want to know. Uh, right, let's just turn that off. What we're going to do is take a sphere, and I'm going to try to keep this procedural. Uh, take a sphere and apply a displacer. So if you look at condensation, um, it's not perfect circles. They've got a bit of, like, they're pulled, they're like dragging down almost, which is obviously due to them kind of following the motion of, like some of them are like dripping. But we kind of want to be able to replicate that. So we're going to use a displacer, use a noise, and turn the global scale of that down to like 10. Um, and then let's see, turn the height of that down to like 0 0.2 maybe. Cool, so we've just got like very basic distortion of shape there. I'm going to scale that down. Uh, and then can we up maybe that? And I'm going to create about five different versions of this. So, I mean, I could spend more time on this, but honestly, now for this, I'm just going to change the seed. Let's move that up there. And if you want to have more control over this, I'll show you how you can go about doing that. Uh, it might be worth trying a different noise, maybe like a, maybe not a wavy turbulence. <laughs> if we up the scale of that, maybe it's like 50. Hmm. Let's see if there's any that give us some interesting results. Blistered turbulence is quite interesting. Let's scroll through these quick. Ooh, that one's quite interesting. Just bring more white into that to scale it back up. Oh, what have I just done? There we go. Let's just get closer, close in on these. What we can do is grab a squash and squash and stretch type square fit to parent. Cool. Uh, so if we change the factor, we can start to obviously either squash or stretch this. So if I put this up to like 125, and then you can start to play with like how this is going to look. So now we get more of like a teardrop. We can change the center of where that's going to start expanding it from top just like you could really crush that down so when you combine that with a displacer there you go you're starting to get some like kind of interesting results then let's expand that out a bit cool All right so now we've got yeah five different spheres i uh, just we got some nice variation and let's drag all these into a cloner. Not no. so cloner. I'm gonna say um it's probably a good point to save at this point just because it can get pretty intensive um when you start duplicating loads. So we're gonna change this to object and we're gonna take our liquid actually no take the bottle and oh already it's Having a meltdown. Uh, how do I hide all those lines? Is it from? Yes, yeah, from the display. Right. So let's just hide all those. 
so I don't get all those lines going everywhere and I can actually see what I'm doing. Cool, right. Uh, I'm actually going to shrink all these down, but we can do that with a plane effector. So select our cloner, get plane. Um, we don't want it to affect position, we want it to affect scale, uniform scale, and I'm going to just shrink them down to about 0 0.5, which is cool. Um, let's put these into a group and we call this condensation. Um, we actually want to crank this up loads. I'm going to just put it up to a thousand just for now, just so we can get a bit of a better feel. And we can start to tweak this to make it look a bit better. So, first of all, we want a another. We want a push apart effector, um, and this is just going to stop them intersecting. Um, and we want to do the scale to be about. How big are these spheres? They're only about 0 0.2, so make that about 0 0.2 as well. And that's just going to make sure they all have 0 0.2 between them, which is obviously the size of the... I'll make it 0 0.3 just because we have some variation. 0 0.3. So it's just going to stop them intersecting. And if we just take a quick little look around... We should see, yeah, they're all good. Cool. Um, I'm now going to create a a random effector now, uh, and this is for the sizing. So again, turn position off, turn scale on, uniform scale, and we create this zero point five. Just so we got some big, some small, and let's actually do it in the minus. And what if we do minus one actually? How big can condensation get? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, then none of them are that massive. So let's just do 0 0.5. Cool. Um, so we got some small ones and some like good size ones. And okay, so we can actually start to really crank this up. I'm gonna put this in here. We can literally put this up to like five thousand, something crazy like that. Let's turn the condensation off for now. So we just don't crash the whole system. So we've got all the modeling set up pretty much. So I'm going to turn it off and then I'm also just going to drop it back down, down to like 100. Just so it's not trying to compute anything in the background. Cool, right, so let's go back to lighting this thing. Right, so uh, let's do the, yeah, let's do the lighting first. So. Um, there's a few ways we can go about doing this, and one is, well, the way that's best. Actually, I think it's best for us to do the texturing because as soon as we put a glass material on there, it's going to completely change how the light interacts with it. So I've got this lovely glass material, which I bought when I first got Corona, and it's actually made by... Uh, one of the guys that works for Corona, so it's a good glass material. Um, I can't remember how much it was, I think it was literally like five pounds, something like that, nothing at all. And it's got this really nice bump material in here, which um, gives you that roughness that glass has, uh, which is super, super cool. So I'm just going to take that and drag it onto a bottle, and I'll break down what's actually on it. Um, so, literally, it's a completely it's just a basic plain glass material, 1.517 for the IOR for the reflection and refraction, and but it's just got that bump material in it. So nothing too crazy. You can literally just copy what I've got. Um, and if you've got like a texture similar to that, um, 
put that into the bump or you can just use like a normal noise that's what I used to do um, just take a noise and kind of tweak the settings in there and that will give you that rough look as well uh, so yeah I've got the glass material liquid if I create a new material uh, take off that put on the reflection refraction and the refraction of liquid is 1.3 point 1.333 um, I'm just going to leave it like a plain water for now and I'm just going to name these, I like to be organised, so this is glass this is liquid and then what do we want to do with the cap, what's our reference it's like a yellow um, cool, we could do a yellow I suppose just for now so bring that up, it's a bit of a paler yellow turn on the reflection uh, Caps aren't crazy reflective, so we can just drop the glossiness down a bit. And they don't really have much texture either, um, so we'll leave that. That's just going to be fairly standard for now. We can we can come back and tweak these if we need to. Um, and I'm just thinking, <laughs> I didn't check one of the most important things, which is actually going to really bug me if it's all horribly wrong now um, so normals are like a super important yes that's fine so your normals are like super important to making sure that your liquid refracts correctly so um, the way normals work or what they do is it affects how the light interacts with your model so if the normals are orange like this that means that when light hits it it's going to bounce it back out um, it's uh, it's more important when we're using like glass materials because it's going to completely affect how refraction works. Um, so you want it to be facing outwards for your outer wall and then let's just, oh we can't, and then you basically want it to follow so like the top of it the normals are going to be facing outwards and that inner wall again is like bouncing the light back inwards. Same with the liquid we need that to be facing I don't think that's right I think we need to reverse those uh, reverse normals um, yes okay so I think that's all okay cool oh hide that condensation right so we've got our materials on there and the condensation which can be a liquid as well and let's start with our liquid light so I'm gonna get a corona light and the way you actually go about doing this is you bounce light off the back wall um, and let's just drag that there uh, turn off visible directly and let's just have a look at how this looks straight off the bat cool and the bump on that bottle is ridiculous, so let's actually turn that down to like two maybe. Doesn't need to be that crazy. Cool, so we got a nice... Right, so the problem we're getting at the moment is we can obviously see the liquid Oh, we can, sorry, see the light in the reflection, so, can we, cool, if we turn on visible, turn off visible in refractions, we're not going to see it there. Um, well, actually, no, we want to keep refractions on, but if you untick a clue of the lights, I don't know why, but it just fixes it from having that problem. Uh, and we can actually move this. We want to move it closer to the bottle, so we're going to bring that back and I'm going to turn off that bender form because that's going to annoy me. And let's cool that floor. Bring this back. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Cool. 
So the reason for bringing that back is you can see it's filled, filled the bottle a lot more. If we start to take it away from the bottle, first of all, the floor is just being black. And what we should probably do is actually put a white material on on our floor, just so the whole thing's a bit brighter. Cool. Yeah, that helps a lot. Uh, so we'll call that floor. Now there's a lot of variables now when it comes to lighting. So if we're to take the width down of this plane, so say like uh, change it to a hundred, and um, we continually start to shrink it down, it's going to add like black to the outside of our bottle, and that's going to help to create thickness. Um, you can see how it fades to black on that, and they probably would have like achieved an effect like that by doing this. Um, so I'm going to keep it wide just for now um, because because we're using a curved background the black lines aren't perfectly straight and it looks a bit weird that it's actually curving so let's back that up to about 200 width and I'm going to show you so the lighting looks cool but we're getting these really hot spots like uh, especially in the middle and the bottom and also the punt looks really weird as well so what we're going to do is actually move this uh, light behind the plane uh, we're going to create a null uh, change this, move this to about the middle of the bottle and that's going to be used as a target for the light so if you right click in the 40 tags target and drag the null in there the light's now going to face where that null is. Um, and obviously now if we were to use the interactive viewport can't see anything, there's no light because it's behind the plane. If we go into the floor and I'll try to do this while it's previewing and turn on translucency I've got it set at 50 so that means it's 50% translucent and now it's letting that light shine through um, and we're getting this much softer look but it just helps to kind of give you it doesn't get you don't get those hot spots and now you have a lot more control without having to tone the light down loads I actually want to bring this bend forward I don't like how far it is away from the bottle so let's put it like there and now we can move our light closer um, so what we actually do is use a IES light, so if you come into your light settings, you can tick this box and now you can go, I think I've got some saved on my computer, but if not you can go into the content browser of Cinema 4D and use some in there. So what they basically are are these things here and they're basically images that you can use to drive the shape and the intensity of the light. Um, so if I was to take, for example, 20, 20 looks quite good. Um, let's try 29, 29 looks good. So take 29, put that in there. I don't need to save that. Let's look at this now. So you can see how that's completely changed the light. Uh, if I'm to uh, if I untick the IAS, that's what we had before, and this is what we got now. So it's a create. It's like changed how the light is working based on that image. So we took 29. So that's quite a thin and direct light, um, which is why we're getting so much intensity in the middle. So if we were to take that down to like half as powerful, probably even less. I think we might actually have to crank it all the way down. Cool. Actually shine this up through the bottom. Or I might actually take the target off in a second. So that punt looks much better when it's lit from below. So I'm actually going to take the target off. Um, I'm going to now rotate the light back and I actually want to rotate it pretty much 90 degrees so it's facing directly up so that gets us that really nice lighting in the center 
and the top, but now we've got a weird look in the punt. Um, so we can like tweak play with this and just see see as we're facing it down, we're shifting how it, how the lighting looks. Cool, right. So let's start. Now we've set up that kind of basic setup for the light. Um, let's do some front lights as well. Um, and then I'm going to. So I'm just going to turn off that corona light. Uh, and I'm actually going to use a plane. Uh, this is actually quite a common technique that people use. Um, probably not as much now because you usually have like so much control with. Uh, your lights and being able to feed in gradients, but the great thing about using a plane is that you can basically apply a texture to it and uh, sorry I'm trying to multitask and I'm not good at that um, you can feed textures into it so I can put a gradient into it and that allows me to create fall off in the lights to get softer results uh, so let's just use the target I'm going to scale this plane down and I'm going to go Krona light material, put that onto the plane, and I'm just going to put a gradient in here. And if I turn textures back on, I can see which way that gradient is. So let's invert that and emit on both sides. And if we just go interactive viewport and see how this looks. Right, so let's bring it in a bit closer. So you can see how the gradient we're using is like making it fade at the edge. And this just gives stuff like a so much softer result. So we can start to move this over, move it down. Uh, bring it back around to the side of it and that by using gradients like this so if I was to bring in this black here bring it like halfway you can see how now that strip is much thinner because it's fading that black out um, and what I'll usually do to get softer results is like actually change that to like 50% and then just bump up the overall intensity so Maybe like 10. Now you get a much softer result. Um, but yeah, that's how you can go about getting like highlights on the front. Um, I don't think we're going to use them for this. And actually what I'll do is I'll show you another technique um, if you wanted to use a Corona light. So if we actually deleted... Uh, the light texture off that plane. Uh, I'm going to save quickly, grab a Corona light, and I'm going to apply the same target tag. And I'm going to put this behind this plane here, just trying to match up its angle and its position. Cool. and then scale that down and this is kind of like the same principle as what we're doing for the lighting for the liquid but if we I can delete that target tag now uh, put the light as a child of the parent so sorry child of the plane so whenever we move the plane around the lights gonna move with it and um, we're going to apply that translucent material to the plane and what this allows us to do is actually it's gonna soften the light so if this renders out now, it's, it's going to be a lot grainier because of, I don't know why, I'm guessing it's translucency, but I don't know why it's been so grainy, but you can see how much softer that light is now on the bottle, and the further away we move the light from the plane, the softer that's going to become. If I move it really far away. So you can see that's like a much softer result now. Uh, and you can do this to like, like I said, just soften off a highlight. Um, it looks, personally in my opinion, it looks better than having like harsh 
edges on the light and it reflects like what a softbox would look like as well if you were to light this in a photo studio. Um, so I'm going to leave that there, hopefully those were some like, helpful little tips and let's get back to lighting the liquid, so I'm going to delete that. Okay, so I just went back through the edit for this video and realised that I've spent about an hour of it just going over the lighting um, and really it was not worth all that time. So what I'm just showing you now is a really quick playthrough of what I did um, and then in a second I'm going to basically just do an overview of everything that I did within that hour. Um, there really isn't much to it. Um, I think a lot of it was trial and error and that's why I spent so long on it. Um, so I'm just doing a quick preview, well not preview, but a run through of that now. Uh, hopefully you can pick up on some kind of details, but there's nothing in there that I'm not going to cover in a second. Um, um, so yeah, I'm going to cut into the overview now and just catch up to speed on everything that I captured in that one hour long segment. So um, I've got the same translucent material for the wall that we had before. I've decreased the width down on the plane and what that essentially does is, if I just go to this, uh, it's going to help you to get like the black kind of thickness on the edge of the bottle. Um, and then if you if I was to increase this, say if I duplicated it maybe by 200, it might not change too much because our lighting is doing a lot of the work. But it basically takes away from that black border. So I've decreased the size down of that. Um, we've then got only a few lights. Oh, uh, yeah, three lights. So we've got our... Actually, no, that's, that's a lie. We've only got two lights. Um, so we've got our key light, which is our light, which is right behind our wall. Um, it's fairly small, and it doesn't have an IES on, so it's actually just the regular light, circular. But it's got a 200% intensity and 45% directionality. So that basically means, if I come into the camera, that um, it's going to be a more direct light, which is allowing us to get these hot spots here. So if I was to turn the directionality down to zero, you see we lose those hot spots now. Um, you can still see that it's kind of focusing in that area, but the liquid's a lot flatter now. Um, so by putting that up to 45%, we're able to really capture the like variation in color of the liquid and it just adds a lot more interest to the to the render as well so playing with this is going to give you some really interesting looks like i said we're not using the ies just a simple light 200 uh, intensity 45 directionality and that's been shined through the back wall um, and what i also did was i moved the wall closer um, so we could get a more intense light like the one you just saw and then the other light we're using is actually just this plane here which I've attached a a light material to and I've got this texture here which is just a, a light little spotlight here um, with a bit of texture in and this just gives us some really soft reflections on the front so if I turn off our liquid light um, and this is driving all the lighting, but we're getting these really nice reflections down the left-hand side, which are, like I said, are nice and soft because it's using that like softbox texture. Um, and what I've done with that is just turn the intensity up to 10. Um, so yeah, it's actually just a two-light setup. Um, the one light for the reflections, and then the other light for the liquid. And the final thing that I did was actually create a separate material for uh, surface imperfections. So I've essentially got this black material here, just 10% uh, black. And then in the reflection, um, I've built up uh, a range of, well, there's two textures. Um, and I'll just talk through how I've gone about doing this. So I've got these water droplets here. Um, that's the original photo. And I have then put that inside a Corona Color Correct. Um, and what I've done is 
bring the exposure down so it helps to kind of like lower the contrast of it a bit so it's not either completely glossy or rough there's kind of like um it's in in between which gives it a nice like softer appearance um i have then paired that with another texture which are these fingerprints and this is like a really high contrast so this has given us some um, let me just render this actually and then i can kind of show you as i'm going along let's put that on the bottle uh interactive viewport and i created a sec second light for this one so all i did was um if i just come out of there i literally took that same plain material we looked at a minute ago and duplicated it to the other side and this way we just get more reflective details so so this is what this texture looks like um, so if I go back into it and I can break this down a bit more for you so if we hide the original material and hide the transform we have the the ink streaks but they're facing the wrong way so all I did was go to effect and then transform and just put the angle to 90 degrees and then I also used the move to just shift it along so if I put this to like 1 it's just going to completely move it along the x-axis uh, so let's just put that back so I've used a transform to fix that out oh sometimes it bugs out and does this So you've got that, and then, like I said, I've layered on this extra material which just brings in some smudges, uh, which you can see when it buffers for me. See around here, and then on the neck of the bottle. And it just kind of adds to that realism by having surface imperfections because you would get smudges on glass from where you like are holding it, essentially. Uh, again, put that in a Corona color correct and bumped up the contrast on that so it was really glossy. And essentially that was that. Yeah, all right, let's set up the multi passes. So we're gonna want one for condensation. So compositing tag, enable, and then just copy and paste this and just change the buffer so each one has its own number. And then let's do one for the wall. Cool. Go to Corona, multipass, and let's drag that over, enable it, apply denoising to all these, reflect, refract, yeah, yeah. Uh, then we want the mark, actually, hold on. Let's do shadows, caustics. Um, and then, then now let's do the masks. So, object one, and that is bubbles. Then we've got the cap, and that's number two. Uh, then we've got well, the liquid, and that's three. And then four is the actual bowl. Cool. Uh, and then let's set up interactive lights. So we have all those. Sweet. Um, cool. And then let's actually change that to Corona. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Don't want that. It's Photoshop file. Uh, let's just find where this is. Uh, PSD and this is going to be the raw render 200120 beer bottle um, how many passes 10 it's denoiser of corona high quality this is all okay we... so I'll catch you guys in the second part where we will be going through the post-production part of it in Photoshop where we start to comp together a few different renders and create the final image. So thanks for watching this part and I will catch you in the next video.
Thank you.